Okay, hi guys. Welcome back to Bowling with Coach Charlie. So yeah, so I just realized that today I'm at 902 subscribers. So thank you guys very much for watching my videos and thank you for subscribing. We're very close to the 1000 subscriber milestone, uh, which is good. So yeah, it's been a while since I made uh, videos because I've been really busy with actually school coaching. So I'm uh, coaching at least three schools and as well as doing private coaching as well on the weekends even my sundays i'm actually doing coaching and i'm also uh, teaching programming to like primary and secondary schools so been very very busy um yeah so no much time to record videos i'll try and record uh as and when i have the time to and uh sometimes there's also technical issues so um today's video actually had to be re-recorded because uh earlier i had recorded this vi video for mr antonio which is a, a Italian viewer who sent in his videos. But um, as I looked through the video, like the, the quality wasn't good. I was fiddling around with the chroma keys and all that. Um, and it wasn't good, right? It cut off a lot of my, my head actually from the chroma keys. Okay, so uh, going back into the review itself. So today we're going to look at an Italian bowler by the name of Antonio. Uh, I can't really pronounce his full name. Antonio... Antonio... Uh, Vise Domini, Vise Domini, I okay. Antonio Vise Domini. I'll just uh, reserve to Antonio. So, Mr. Antonio here is a doubt meal bowler, one handed. He wanted me to take a look at his game and comment that should he go uh, with thumb in one hand or with thumbless one hand. So, this is shot with his thumb in, and this is shot without his thumb in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. For the you no, know, for the league viewers, uh, sorry, for the league bowlers and uh, who's um, anyone who's like average at least like one fifty and above, or you've been bowling for a while, easily you can see like uh, Mr. Antonio's basics and forms, basic form and timing, release everything is obviously pretty good, right? He has decent ref rate for one hander, decent ball speed. Uh, let me check. What did I write down? His ball speed? Yeah, I actually previously measured his ball speed is about twenty four kilometers per hour. I think it works out to be probably like, uh, what, 15, 16 miles per hour? Uh, around there? No, no, actually it should be higher than that. It should be like 16, 16 miles per hour. 15 to 16 miles per hour should be around there. So basically he has decent ball speed for a one-hander. And that does match up with his uh, ref rate. I can't really see his ref rate off uh, just from here. But I'm estimating his ref rate is at least in the 300s. Um, maybe it could be higher if he's playing thumbless one, thumbless one-handed. So, from what I can see from his like from Mr. Antonio's back view with his thumb in and without his thumb in, it doesn't really like I can't really see a difference between with his thumb in and without his thumb in. Like both forms look about exactly the same. This is with his thumb in, and this is without his thumb in. So it looks exactly the same to me. So if he's asking me for reference for recommendations of whether he should put his thumb in or not, I would say, um, Antonio, you have to decide if, um, for example, if thumbless, bowling thumbless gives you a higher ref rate, then you might want to go with thumbless. That means not putting your thumb in. But you have to balance it with, are you more accurate with the thumb in or without? Because at the end of the day, bowling is a precision sport. So if your ref rate is not going to change by a lot, let's say with your thumb in, maybe you're averaging like 300 ref rate RPM. And then without your thumb in, you're averaging like, let's say 400 or like 380 RPM. So if the ref rate is only about 100 refs RPM difference, but your accuracy is a lot better with your thumb in, then I would suggest you stick with your thumb in. Because as I can see from the shots, you don't have a carry issue. So you have more than enough, more than enough ref rate to drive through the pins. Um, whether with a thumb in or without the thumb in. So you can see here, right, his shots drive through. Okay, that is a solid 10. But his shots are, no, nope, pretty good. He has decent ball speed, it's pretty good. His fundamentals are all pretty good. Then I'll just talk about more about the subtle details of how we can make Mr. Antonio, a bowler might um, Antonio better. Because uh, if you look at his form, he has a five set approach. Okay, we look from the side. So from here, okay, from here, right? So this with his thumb in, one, two, three, four. Oh, is it four or five? Let's see whether he moves his left leg. One, two, three, four. Oh, he takes a four-step approach. He moves his right, right foot first. Let's see if I have a, another side view. I can't, I can't see from here. This one. Nope. Yeah, five. 
you just couldn't see the first step so it's actually really good because his first two steps are really small so you can see he antonio takes a five step approach and his first two steps is really small so one two uh second step is decently i think larger but first step is really small gentle second step is a bit larger three four i like how his third and fourth step is really really small um let's go uh i need my illustration too epic pen so if we are talking about his footwork i feel like his third step could be a little bit bigger so let's put here and it's pointed so this is one and two so one and two yeah decently small because he seems to look like a pretty decently big guy his third step is kind of a little bit on the small side like this his third step might be a little bit too small so actually i would suggest for mr antonio is maybe he further shorten his first and second first and second step like have really really small first one and two steps like one and two further shorten it and maybe even move even further back on the approach i wonder if he's as far back on the approach as he can i think he is because he is a pretty tall guy let's see if you're uh, looking at here yeah i think antonio could afford to stand a little bit further back if possible because you can see here like on this particular lane there is some some lane distance between the dots as well as the last part of the lane and if we refer to where he's standing like here he is actually standing with his toes like touching the second row of dots but i think antonio can move probably half a step or full step back so that he can actually have a larger third step because that larger third step is going to help him to like feel a little bit more stable in his downswing and it's going to help his weight transfer um it's kind of hard to describe because basically by by him having this really small third step like he's having this really small third step he's kind of like he has to step a little bit sideways uh yeah it's also swinging around his hips a little bit but this third step could be a little bit larger this says it could be a little bit larger so he feels like mm, it's pretty hard to describe but uh i would suggest bowlers like uh, i would suggest a bowler like antonio if you have a really small third step just experiment with having a slightly larger third step like a normal distance third step but what is good here is that he has a really small fourth step but he is actually landing with his heel on the fourth step so that is actually a detriment if you see here antonio lands with his heel so ideally what you want to do is you want to land with your front your toe first on your fourth step so that you have better weight and momentum transfer moving forward good because I'm sure no any anyone who is like um has a little bit of a sports background would know that sprinters they, they run on their toes right and when you want to like accelerate forward you want to run on your toes because you want to push forward with your toes so that's how you generate momentum or yeah continue good forward momentum so by landing on your heels you are like putting bricks on it so right here his fourth step is actually landing with his heels uh i want to reverse that right so in, this is in red landing with his heels whereby he should actually land with his fourth step with his toes so that will give him better weight transfer moving forward so why antonio needs better weight transfer is because his his movements is kind of lacking um lacking speed so to say so um i just want to like play this so he's lacking like speed he is fluid. So Antonio is very fluid in his form. Oh. Uh huh. Oh yeah, having having issues with my recording software. Can I play this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, having issues with Kenobia there. So let's play this again. So you see Antonio is fluid, but he's kind of like not as dynamic as like some of the younger bowlers that we've seen right so it doesn't move as fast not as dynamic if he has if he moves a little bit faster with higher swing speed he could probably get his ref rate a little bit higher and be more power his shot can be a little bit more powerful so part of the the reason for his lack of speed is his uh weight transfer so one of the things that's stopping his weight transfer or momentum transfer going forward is his fourth step the how he lands with his heel another one is how early he leans forward with his body so uh his side view here will explain it illustrate it a bit better so antonio actually leans forward on like his this is second step right 
and as he as he moves his ball he starts leaning forward which is correct i will feel like this timing of when you move your ball down and you move your upper body forward is correct that means you're supposed to sync this too but what i find that uh, what he does like uh which i can not say a mistake but what he can improve on is that he moves his upper body way too fast too soon like you can see antonio actually moves his upper body down all the way this is his one two is this his third step yeah this this is he has a one two and then he has a third step here right so he moves his upper body all the way like his spine tilt all the way forward uh at the end of his third step so this is like way too early generally speaking i think Antonio could benefit right from having um keeping his spine tube a little bit higher or moving his for his uh, upper body weight transfer a lot more gradually like move it forward more gradually so as he moves forward gradually he can actually get better momentum transfer so because he has actually fully like moved his weight forward so at the end of his third step he has really like full spine tilt forward here so here his spine tilt is already like so low then he can no longer like move forward anymore so since he cannot move his uh, spine or his upper body forward anymore he cannot generate further momentum transfer moving forward so i think this is a case where his upper body just moves a little bit too early too early too soon so yeah to move a little bit less gradually that means like maybe on the third step his spine tube should have been um maybe i use uh, blue here his spine tube should have been here in the third step and then his spine tube moving forward as as it goes into the fourth step then you'll be here but anyway um for a one-hander as well you don't want to like um have too much spine tube so antonio here also does overdoes his spine tube like uh he has about 45 degrees of spine tube here right for one-hander i think that's too much because if you look at his finishing position it's actually more obvious when he goes in the finishing position that he is overdoing his spine tube. So usually a one-hander shouldn't be shouldn't have so much spine tube, 45 degrees of spine tube. That is a little bit too much. So when you go so so much spine tube, right? The upper body drops too low. So upper body drops too low, and you kind of lose leverage with your ball at the release point here. So you're losing leverage here. So when you lose leverage, you have like a smaller like your flat spot becomes kind of smaller and there's a less time frame your your flat spot meaning that your window to do execute your release becomes smaller so as your window to execute the release becomes smaller you it's um harder for you to like generate referee harder for you to like guide the ball to the target to like do stuff with with your hands right like to do the flick or to do the yo-yo release or any other release that you like as a one-hander at the at the flat spot so if you have less time it's harder to actually execute it so Antonio actually here has uh, less of a flat spot, uh, probably because of he he's like overdoing his spine tube. So his flat spot, as he slides, yeah, his flat spot should be around here. Actually, his flat spot is not too bad, I, honestly. Okay, let's let's take a look. Let's take a look. Yeah, I might be wrong. I think he's wrong because as he slides ahead right so he has a really good knee bend so this good knee bend actually increases his flat spot quite a fair quite a fair bit so his flat spot is in between the ties so you can see from the front tie to the back tie yep so there's a front tie to the back tie he has this much space for his flat spot which is you know, pretty generous so a lot of space for his flat spot because his his uh, feet has really landed here so he can actually have a, a huge flat spot to actually power through the ball if he wants to Mm, but I'm just feeling that even though he has such a large flat spot, his ref rate is like kind of lacking because he's missing that little bit of speed and dy dynamic dynamicism, dynamism, dynamicism. I don't know if that's a word. Okay. Uh. Yeah. My my Kenobia is kind of like lagging here. Yeah, my Kenobia is kind of lagging. Oh, totally frozen yep became a slideshow okay yeah my recent change of my uh, recent gpu i'm having issues with the recording software with uh like having multiple applications moving hmm.
yeah can't really see a smooth way for me to do this Hmm, but earlier, I mean, if I could get it to play normally. Okay, okay, not too bad. Is this still slowing down? Ah, speed 70%, okay. Yeah, put it at one speed, okay. At one speed, yep. Yeah, so Antonio is like smooth, but he's kind of slow. His movements are kind of slow. But generally speaking, for like if you look at a lot of youth bowlers, their movements are a little bit more dynamic, a little bit faster, especially on the on the final part on the downswing into the release. Yep. So Antonio is a little bit slow on that. So I feel like if he could like have better weight transfer, or maybe not lean so far forward so early, then maybe he could like slightly better weight transfer. Mm. His balance arm also can be improved as well. So if you look at his balance arm here, like Antonio isn't properly using his balance arm. So what I mean by that is this, you see his balance arm is kind of uh, like very mm, not firm. I wouldn't say flaccid, but like he isn't, he isn't firming up his balance arm. So if you actually have your you, one handers, you can try this. If you can actually have a very firm balance arm, right? A firm balance arm, not saying that you should tension it too much, but having it firm, and a little bit of tension but having your wrist relaxed like this would actually help the one-hander gain leverage because you it, having a firm balance arm gives you a very solid upper frame so that you can actually hit up on the ball at the release point better because if you don't have a very solid very firm so upper solid frame right so when you release you won't be able to like flick or power through the release so what we want here is uh, for antonio to like have a more firm straighter firmer balance arm then that will help him to um, be to have a very more solid upper frame. So a more solid upper frame to again actually accelerate through the ball better. And then that will give him higher ref rate. So other stuff than that, um, I think Antonio could also, other than having that, uh, he could also experiment with having his balance arm moving 45 degrees forward. Uh, maybe where here, maybe I could use this. Okay. So what I mean by 45 degrees forward is this. So as he places the ball right into the swing his balance arm could go here that means having it 45 degrees in front of him keeping it straight 45 degrees in front of him um i wouldn't say yeah kind of having his like elbow being straight then balance arm 45 degrees in front of him and then as he goes into the release so as he goes into the release the balance arm would actually kind of snap to his to his left side so it's kind of hard to illustrate here, but uh, it's kind of um, like drawing. So it's kind of like a rowing motion, right? So you have a balance arm in front of you and then you snap it to the left as you release. Okay. Uh, if I can find like uh, probably uh, videos of like pro bowlers or like more competent youth bowlers who are doing this, then I could probably demonstrate a little bit better. So that turning motion, turning motion of the shoulders as well as the balance arm would actually help uh, one-handers actually get a uh, higher ref rate because it gives them a little bit more power and more torque at their upper body there okay so that those are also things that you can work on um other than that no antonio is a pretty good bowler so his fundamentals are pretty solid his finishing position is almost perfect right like uh legs extender good knee bend spine tube maybe a little bit too much to the right but it gives him a lot of space like bowling shoulder is lower than the non-bowling shoulder so that's really really good see bowling shoulder here lower than the non-bowling shoulder so that's really good um my only complaint is that his balance arm could be firmer and then maybe he could employ the uh 45 degrees forward balance arm during the placement and then to pull the balance arm back during the release so that he can use it to accelerate his shot give his shot a little bit more power it's something that i forgot to add uh in my previous review was that actually i noticed that antonio has a really good um hand position in his backswing so what i mean to say by hand position is this so if you so i think a lot of my viewers right when the uh when i review like uh bowlers quite a few one-handed or two-handed bowlers and especially i think the 
Mm, I forgot there was a recent review where a lot of the commenters were saying that uh, he should have his fingers inside of the bowling ball, to keep his fingers on the inside of the bowling ball in the backswing or on the release. And uh, this is actually what they're referring to. So if you can see in the back view here, uh, maybe let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, can I? Okay, zoom in. Okay, yes, we can. We can zoom in. Okay, so you can see here. Antonio's index finger is here, right? And uh, his middle and ring finger is on the inside of the bowling ball at his backswing. So actually this is what uh, the viewers were actually referring to. And this is what we, is actually good about Antonio's release. Which is he keeps his fingers, his middle index finger on the inside of the bowling ball. And have his uh, index finger pointing like backwards or down towards the floor. So that so that you keep your fingers on the inside of the bowling ball. So he keeps it on the inside and you can see that he actually keeps it on the inside most of the downswing and then he's at the back of the bowling ball here. So here, I mean the video resolution isn't as good but you can see here his middle and ring finger is still on the back of the bowling ball and only as he releases, he actually goes through the bowling ball. Yep, he lifts and goes through the bowling ball as he releases. So this is a, actually a pretty decent release, pretty good release. Um, the only comment I would have is that maybe he can delay it a little bit later. So this is his thumbless release, right? So you can see in his thumbless release here, let me zoom in again, right? So that we can see better. So in his thumbless release, Antonio does it a little bit better. He keeps his middle and ring finger on the inside of the ball for a little bit longer. So he keeps it on the inside a little bit longer and then as he goes, obviously as he goes into the downswing and into the release, he rotates his uh, palm a little bit. But he's still essentially behind the ball and his middle and ring finger is under the ball because now in this case he doesn't have his thumb in so he can go more under the ball and then as he lifts, he lifts through the ball, right? His fingers will go through the ball, like go through the ball here as it goes upwards. Right, lifts and goes through the ball. And that's how he's able to actually generate the, the amount of referee and power that he has. So that you can see when he hits the rack, it's actually it's a pretty good impact. Right? You see when he hits the pins, he has pretty decent amount of power when he goes through the pins. So uh, that is something that I want all, not just one-handers, but uh, two-handers as well to learn, which is to, when you hold the ball, um, your index finger pointing forward, but as you... Uh, go into place the ball and into the swing you keep your index finger pointing forwards or down towards the floor but have your so I showcase it again so as you go into the back swing you keep your index finger pointing forward or downwards towards the floor and then you have your middle and ring finger on the inside of the bowling ball throughout your back swing then you want to keep hold this position for as long as possible and uh, delay delay the turn for as long as you can so only during like at the release portion when you go into the flat spot then you will have a little bit of a turn you have a little bit of a turn here so as you can see when it goes through the flat spot he turns a little bit turns his hands just just a tad bit his hand goes like towards this he turns towards this just a little bit and then have your fingers lift through the ball through the release then that's how you can get actually good power leverage and power and uh, yeah, good ref rate and power throughout your shot. Okay, so all right, that's about it. Okay, um, other than that, I think, yeah, Antonio is pretty good. So um, nothing much I could comment or I could change about his game. I just uh, hope that those minor tweaks can make him an even better bowler. He's easily a uh, 200, like 180 to 200 average bowler based on what I've seen him now. So we can yeah, go even further. Okay, so um, if you guys are interested to like send some videos for me to review, you can send it to me via my um, various social media links to my email. Um, to through you can contact me through Instagram, through Facebook, uh, through my YouTube channel. You can send me um, comments and or through Twitter as well. And then you can send me your videos either through your various social media link. You can upload it to your social media. Then just send me the link, or you can email the videos to me at uh, bowlingwithcharlie at gmail.com if uh, 
Uh, you can also check out my website for other stuff as well. So I used to do, um, I was going to say I was going to do remote coaching, but now with my time slot, like almost full Monday to Sundays, my time slot are almost fully full. I don't even have time to you know, uh, take a break and play some games to relax. So um, I might not have the time to do remote coaching. Um, yeah, it's pretty hard to arrange remote coaching with the time differences and so on. But uh, I will just uh, try my best to do some um video free video reviews for the viewers uh anytime that i can okay thank you guys for watching and uh, supporting my channel and uh let's hope we reach 1000 subscribers and um i i don't know how we should celebrate that so if you have uh, suggestions on how we can celebrate 1000 subscribers just post in the comments below and uh, yeah so give me some suggestions and i'll see whether i can do it okay thank you guys for watching we'll see you guys in the next video